Someone left a mess in the workshop and I have the job of cleaning it up. And when I'm using a broom, I'm never sure whether I should push the dirt away or drag it back towards me. What I really need is a vacuum cleaner. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, there are actually two cleaners here. Have you ever wondered who invented the vacuum cleaner? Who do you think it was? If you said Thomas Edison, you're not right. He didn't invent it, but in a funny sort of way, he was partly responsible for its development. What do I mean? Well, before Edison came along, the most popular form of mechanical music was the music box. Here's a disc from the Regina Music Box Company, and it played beautiful music on that music box. And the discs were interchangeable. But when Edison came along with his cylindrical and then disc-shaped records, they became very popular indeed, so much so that people didn't want to buy music boxes anymore. And so the music box companies had to think of something else to make besides their music boxes. What do you think the Regina Company came up with? This contraption. It's called the Regina Pneumatic Cleaner. And it's a metal cylinder. It has a leather piston inside it and a broom handle. You pump that backwards and forwards. Can you guess what's happening? Yes, there's a hole there, and if you watch this strip of paper, you can tell that it's blowing air out of that hole. And what they did, and these were used particularly in railway carriages in America around the 1900s, early 1900s, they'd take a hose, connect it to that hole, point it towards the dirt on the floor, and pump like mad. And it pushed the dirt from one end of the carriage to the other. Well, in 1901, an Englishman by the name of Hubert Booth saw one of these demonstrated and he said to himself, I think it would be more efficient if instead of pushing the dirt away we could pull it back towards us with a stream of air. So he did this little experiment in his lounge room. He took a cardboard tube and a clean handkerchief and he put the handkerchief over the end of the tube like so and then he looked for a dirty dusty old chair. Well, what I've done is to sprinkle some clean flour on this stool and we'll see what he did. He sucked through the tube and found that he could catch the flower against the cloth, like that. And he said, yes, this is the principle I've been looking for. So he built a big machine that had a petrol engine that created a vacuum or a low pressure and pulled air up into it and caught all the dust and dirt against a piece of cloth. This thing was so big, he had to cart it around on a dray behind a team of horses. And he'd go up and down the streets offering his services to houses who wanted to be cleaned with his vacuum cleaner. Then in 1907, an American inventor by the name of Spangler came up with another brilliant idea. He said, why not use an electric motor with a fan to create the vacuum and make it go up the sort of handle of a broom? And he showed this idea to a number of people and they said, no, it'll never work. So in the end, in the next year actually, 1908, he sold the idea to a man called William Hoover. And the rest is history because Hoover set up his factory to make the upright vacuum cleaner. And they still make them today. And of course, there are other vacuum cleaners which are long and barrel shaped. And they all still work on that same principle. A fan inside, pulling air in, catching the dirt in a bag. And I'm glad they invented them, aren't you? Curiosity.